Y'all, today we're gonna do some straight up fire Mongolian beef on the Blackstone Griddle. It's gonna be epic. You will not wanna go anywhere else for your Mongolian beef, but at home. It's gonna be some good groceries. You will not wanna miss it. Let's go. All right, so first things first, we got to get our beef prepped. Prepped, I mean, we gotta get it cut up, a little marinade we're gonna put on it, a little extra step that makes a huge difference, okay? So for this, I'm using flat meat. Got this from Meat and Bone not long ago. Very similar to flank steak. Use flank steak if you can't find flat meat. Uh, again, I'm just using flat meat because I want to. So to get nice bite-sized pieces, you wanna cut with the grain first, okay? Then once you have that, I'd say one to two inch slices, depending on however you want it. Uh, I went about an inch, that's perfect bite. And then you cut against the grain and kind of bring your knife uh, at an angle, all right? About a 45 degree angle and just kind of come down and you slice your beef nice and thin, not too thin. Uh, so you don't want to like paper thin, okay? Total pounds, about one and a half pounds, all right? So next is the marinade. And it's not really like a flavor marinade. This is more of getting it nice and tender, even more tender, okay? Buying in a bowl, this is a measuring cup. Uh, two tablespoons of cornstarch, two teaspoons of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of water, and mix that up really well. And then add that to your beef and massage it. I'm talking about get in there like you're a paid masseuse. I'm talking about getting those knots that helps break down the beef, okay? The baking soda also helps. Cornstarch helps for the sauce, to, helps the sauce uh, to pull together, tighten up, make it silky also, all right? So you wanna put that in the fridge for uh, at least two hours, okay? That'll make it nice, nice, nice. The sauce, sauce is the boss, all right? Uh, so to this sauce, we're adding three tablespoons of oyster sauce, three tablespoons of hoisin sauce, two tablespoons of soy sauce, half a teaspoon of cornstarch, half a teaspoon of white vinegar, or in this case, I use rice wine vinegar. Now, one teaspoon of ginger, which I used about two big cloves. I use that in my garlic press. Two teaspoons of minced ginger. Uh, it's a thumb of ginger total you need for this recipe. You're using about half. I use a micro plane, nice and minced, okay? You just wanna set that sauce to the side. Got it right here, beautiful sauce. You wanna set it to the side. It is nice. Yeah, taste, taste it also. If you think it needs a little bit more of a zing to it, add some vinegar, okay? If you think it needs a little bit more sauce, a little bit of uh, sweetness, add some more oyster sauce or hoisin sauce, okay? First things first, let's get our Blackstone pre-warmed because things are about to go down here in a minute, I guarantee it. pre warm put all these suckers, all these burners right here. One, two, three, I got a three burner. Three burners on low. Now, let's come over here to the cutting board. All right, let's get our vegetables prepped trusty dial strong knife we're using one green bell pepper one whoop, red bell pepper and shoot i forgot my onion we'll do onion last all right red bell pepper you want to just cut these in like chunks nice bite-sized chunks similarly to how you cut your beef all right you want everything to be you know relatively simple get your red bell pepper had old boy the other day said you cut peppers funky and I was like, duh. I, I just, I like to have it all in one piece, especially whenever you're doing Chinese food, you want all your items to be kind of the same, okay? Uh, I, I like doing it this way. Um, and then that way, none of this really goes to waste, all right, y'all? So you can come here and you can actually stack those up and then we'll be able to dice those up, all right? So we got those ready. Red bell pepper. So I just come in here, just come down, I just follow around the, uh, the stem. And yeah, works for me. But hey, do whatever works for you. Do you, okay? Or onion. Like my old boy Justin Wilson says, oh, onion. Just come down, slice it like that. Again, bite-sized pieces. So there's the, the root part, and this is the, this is the top. I like to come down, split it just like that. And then I like to come in here. That gives a nice piece of onion to eat. Um, if you wanted to cut the root out, sometimes uh, I do that just to, so you don't get a hold of that root when you're eating it, okay? All right, there's that. Kind of the same thing with the uh, green bell pepper. Just come down uh, like that, and then just, I can picture myself now. Piece of green pepper, piece of beef, piece of onion, piece of red bell pepper. 
Dang it, boy. Green onions. Green onion. Three of them. Three green onions. I'm going to use the tops and the bottoms. I want to put these whites in the stir fry as we're stirring it. And then we're going to use the greens for a little garnish. That way, you know, people come over, it'll be like, dang, that's pretty. Nice and fine. You don't want Karen talking trash about your green onions tops. You know what I'm saying? You want her to say, that's nice. All right, y'all, let's get started. Our black stone's pre-warmed. We got some nice temperatures here, 400 degrees, perfect. We're stir frying. Eventually, when we put that meat down, we want that thing scorching hot, okay? So, a little bit of oil. We're gonna come in here. We'll put our veggies down first. Want to get those veggies in there. We want to get those uh, however you like them. I like mine with a little bit of crunch, not a lot, but still kind of al dente, all right? This goes fast, so you got to be on your toes. So that's what you don't want. Um, this is the root root of the, uh, the onion. Throw it out of here. Get out of here. A little bit of trick if you want to get them done quicker. Take you a little bit of water. Kind of come in there. A little bit of water. You don't have to use your steamer if you don't want to. Um, you know, it, it will help soften them up a little bit faster though. I'll we'll put the veggies over here. I'll we'll get ready for our meat to go right there. I want that to get really, really hot. Right now, yeah, this came down quite a bit. That's 269 degrees. That's what the water does. Water will bring down the temperature. So this is what you're looking like right there. It's kind of all stuck together. That's what the cornstarch kind of did. Uh, baking soda hopefully did its job. 420 degrees, 430. This over here still needs to catch up just a little bit, but I'm gonna put it maybe right there in the middle. That's usually the hottest temperature of a griddle, okay? There we go. Just kinda, cause you want all this to try to get some contact patch. So I wanna tell y'all, you know, a cool story, so, uh, I was probably, shoot, I don't know, uh, maybe 11 or 12 years old. Uh, this is when I really first started getting really pumped up about cooking. I used to watch like PBS, things like that. We didn't have cable TV. Um, I would watch this guy, uh, his name was Yan Can Cook. And man, I loved watching his show. I wanted a cleaver just like him. The way he just did things was awesome. He had this thing, if Yan Can Cook, so can you, join in. So what I would do a lot of times is I would go into the kitchen and I never had hardly any of his ingredients. And I would just you know, bring something to the table. <laughs> and it, it would try to emulate what he cooked on that show that day. So, uh, you know, I don't know if that fella's still around. I used to watch Justin Wilson a lot, but uh, he was a big inspiration to me personally. So anybody else watch him? I can't remember his full name. His last name's Yan, I believe. Uh, but uh, yeah, L let me know now in the comments. You know who I'm talking about? All righty. There we go. So you want to cook this. Um, you want it to be medium rare, okay? You don't want to cook this to death. Your flat meat, your flank steak will not, it will not be good. But you do want to get some color on them, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I want to bring our vegetables. Get over here, our vegetables. Okay. And I'm gonna turn my heat down. We don't need this high heat anymore. Uh, you can kind of gauge here about how your vegetables, how your ratios are. We're perfect. It's gonna be good times. I got just a little bit more ginger right here. I'm gonna put in there. And then I got another garlic. Another little bit of garlic. This is one more big clove of garlic. If you don't have big cloves, just use a, uh, Two small cloves. Melon. Boy, I love that. All right. I'm actually going to turn, I'm going to turn these burners off because we're getting ready. Get ready to put our sauce on. Man, y'all. The whites, the onion whites. Love those. Forgot those. Gosh. Why didn't you remind me? Come on, y'all. <laughs> it's not hussy without forgetting something. 
I like to leave those tops for the last anyway. It's all right. All right. Garlic. And our ginger has cooked. It is time for the sauce. Y'all get ready. <laughs> Man, the aroma. This is some good groceries. Put more sauce on it. I love sauce. I'm saucy. There we go. Boy, look at there. Dang, son. Y'all, it's done. Let's plate her up. Mongolian beef is done. Man, look at that. All we need now is a little bit of this green onion tops. Just like that. Boom. Yeah, sometimes on Mongolian beef, they have some uh, dried chilies. Uh, I don't add those. Uh, it's kind of, you know, it's hot. So my family, we don't, we don't really dig it. So I admit it. No, I do like it if I'm doing it for myself. When I order it, I love it. But uh, when I make it at home, do it like this. None of the chilies, all right? Got a little bit of jasmine rice. Uh, this is just, uh, it's actually just a bag of jasmine rice. Normally I do cook mine, but you know, had a few time constraints. So yeah, gotta get a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Onion, pepper, everything, rice, everything. Cheers. Mm. Mm, that, that meat is super tender. The sweetness from that oyster sauce and that hoisin sauce just <clears throat> works. Mmm. It's so rich and flavorful. And that beef, gosh, it's just so tender. That baking soda helps, helps break that meat down a little bit. Boy, that's some good groceries right there. Man, this dish, it was so easy. It's so flavorful too. Family's gonna love it. Y'all, hey, there's gonna be a video right here or right here, I can't remember which. Check this video out, I guarantee it'll make you a griddle pimp.